All right, it is uh, Saturday morning. Yay! And it's not raining, which is even better. Uh, it rained all night. Mm -hmm. All night. It rained hard. <laughs> this guy almost got hypothermia because he got rain in his sleeping bag. It was everywhere. Yeah, um, I'm fine. Yeah. Uh, this is your first night on the AT that yes. you just did, right? Yes, You've first hiked night on the done AT. overnights, but this was your first night mm -hmm. on the AT. We stayed at the Sealy Woldworth uh, shelter. Uh, it was full. And even though it was full, at uh, you tell the story. So what happened last night? What happened was I set up my hammock and I was all prepared for the night and I put my overhang above to make sure no water got into my hammock. Well, in the middle of the night, water apparently was rushing down and it moved one of the rocks that was holding my tarp up. So water got in my waterproof sleeping bag and I went to go set up the tarp again and there was just a huge lake of water in my sleeping bag, which was waterproof, so it didn't come out. So I sat in that water for about three hours, and about 12.30 in the morning, I just decided, I'm done, can't handle this. I was shivering really bad. So I went inside, poked one of the old guys in the head, and asked if I could sleep next to him. And he said yes. And I was very gracious, very grateful. So the moral of the story is, don't let water get in your sleeping bag. Yes. yes. And it was only like 55 degrees. So this is a good oh. reminder on that yeah. hypothermic conditions are not when it's like freezing. Yeah. It's just when you are a little already kind of cold, it's kind of cool, and then you get wet. Mm -hmm. um, so that's fascinating, but this snail is even farther out. So look at that. Look at that cool snail. I hope that's in focus. Or some of these flowers over here. Oh, I'm going to go to the flowers in a minute. All right. So... All right, so you see Derek behind me? There he is. Derek, you ready for lightning round? Yes, I'm ready. Uh, actually, first of all, uh, give me the two-minute drill on your story. You grew up in, you used to live in Buena Vista briefly. What, yes. Real quick, go. I was born in Buena Vista. I lived there until I was six. I was very hyperactive. I moved around 20 times after that. And somehow, through ministry and God, I ended up right back where I came from. All right. He's now at First Brethren as the youth pastor. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, so let's see here. Um, favorite food? Favorite food? Uh, probably have to be a BLT. No matter where I go, no matter what restaurant I have, even if it's fancy or not fancy, I'm searching the world for the best BLT. The, first, the best one right now is in a back road when you're trying to go from 81 to 64. I will not release my information yet because I have to make sure it is the best ever before I release it. All right. You just heard that. If you know of a better BLT, comment below. Tell them where to go. Help a brother out. Okay? In search of the greatest BLT. Please. All right. Um, how many bones have you broken in your lifetime? I have broken every single one of my fingers in martial arts. I have broken... One of my knees and fractured the other. Ooh. I have broken my left arm, and I've gotten a few concussions and broken a good amount of my toes. Wow! I uh, I chipped my ankle bone bowling. Ah, oh, really? That's it. Did you trip? Oh, bowling! I didn't trip. I just hit the ball off my ankle. Oh. All right. Uh, okay. Um, tell me one thing you love about Buena Vista since you've been back for the past almost a year. Mm. One thing you love, go. One thing I absolutely love being in the university is I have a the hammocking spot right by the river across the bridge. Getting out there and setting up my hammock and just seeing all the beautiful views that there is here. There's, in my opinion, it almost the rest of the world pales to the beautiful views of the university. Wow, I did not pay him uh, for that. Um, let's see here. Food that you won't eat. Food that I won't eat is squash. The consistency of it is too squishy for me. It kind of feels like I'm chewing on gross jello. Not good jello, gross jello. Gross jello. Gross jello. That's pretty descriptive. Uh, most exotic food you've ever eaten? Or uh, animal? Hmm. Most exotic food I've ever eaten. Uh, I've eaten quite a amount of bugs. Um, I do love, I have eaten a tarantula a couple of times. Um, but probably my favorite Hmm. I have eaten cockroaches, which were not exactly tasty, but they taste like chips when you eat them. All right. Um, okay. Uh, worst movie you ever saw? Worst movie? 
Ah, there's a movie, an old movie from the 1970s, back before CGI was the best, called Birdigevin. And Birdigevin is about an entire city that is attacked by birds diving out of the sky and these little ravens picking up people and flying off into the air and it's very comical. At one point there's a lion mixed with a human that's living in the tree and there's no backstory whatsoever and he just kind of pops in the middle of the story and he doesn't actually make the sound of a lion, he makes the sound of a chimpanzee. So overall it was a very funny experience but not a very good movie. I think you just made that whole thing up. No I did not. Whatever. Um... How about, uh, let's talk Bible. Do you have a life verse, favorite verse? Yes, uh, Joshua 1, 9. I will be strong and courageous. I will not be terrified and discouraged. The Lord my God is always with me. It's tattooed on my right arm. Awesome. Um, let's see here. Most embarrassing thing that ever happened to you as a child? Ah, most embarrassing. See, when I used to play soccer when I was a kid, and back then I used to think that I was bigger than I was. So my mom always had to buy me the size large and shorts and I would cinch them up and make sure they stayed tight. I have a bad feeling about where this is going. Yes. Well, I used to play goalie and goalie doesn't really it's have any responsibilities. Worse. And uh, so the ball was kicked at me one day during the middle of a middle of a game and I stood there terrified as my pants uncinched and fell down to the ground in front of the entire assembly of people. And that was traumatizing to say the least. I think that's the best story I've heard in a long time. That was hilarious. Um, that's what YouTube was created for. If only we had footage of that. If we find footage, I'll, I'll insert it here in this right here. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, I should have more questions. Uh, favorite restaurant so far in Buena Vista that you've been to? Favorite restaurant in Buena Vista? Uh, definitely JJ's. JJ's. They, meat. they serve some of the best meat around and it's delicious. Okay. Um, favorite part of this hike so far? Favorite part of the hike? Mm. And Oops. I don't and I don't count. Can't be me. Oh well, on the uh, on that hand. Shameless um, plug. Probably finally getting to sleep last night after you know after being so cold, very wet. I finally drifted off to sleep. Got a little bit of rest. That was my favorite part. All Not right. Hiking. Um. Tell me how much you've enjoyed the uphills. Not very much. If you guys do not know, do not hike with Brian. Do not go uphill. If you're only hiking downhill, go with Brian. Because Brian seems to carry a newfound superpower of going uphill at extreme speeds. And I do not have that power whatsoever. That's true. I do have superpowers. You just discovered one of them. Um, all right. Favorite TV show as a kid? Mm. Uh, there's an old cartoon TV show called Chowder that I absolutely love. It's an entire show about food. And growing up, food is amazing. Food is wonderful. Food is still wonderful. And it's still one of my favorite shows today. It's just about a boy who eats a lot of food and has a really interesting, funny family. All right, hold that thought. So check out this mountain laurel. This. So, again, if you're wondering, why should I go hiking? Why would I want to go wander in the woods? This. In fact, um, so I want you to tell a joke to the camera while I take a picture. Tell a joke. Oh, I don't know any jokes. Yes, you can. Tell um, a joke. Tell a joke. Um, hmm. Uh, well, one of my favorite jokes is one that Gabriel Glacius tells um, whenever he's trying to buy time in different places that he goes with kids. And the question is, uh, uh, why did the squirrel cross the road? You think it's a joke because, you know, the normal why is a chicken crossing the road, but that's not the joke. Is why did the squirrel cross the road? It's because he was stapled to the chicken. Exactly. That's it's hilarious. Is that your joke? Yeah, it's a great joke. You don't think it's a great joke? I've always thought it was a wonderful. Usually it makes people laugh, but, you know. Back, back. Cold hearted. All right. I'm sorry about that joke. But it was worth it for me to get the picture. Uh... All right, I'm going to take that vein and tell you another joke. Hey, so if anybody knows what that's about, that little green thing, I'd like to know what that's about. It has nothing to do with the joke, but it's like a pod of some kind. Nature. All right. Uh, <clears throat> knock, knock. Oh, no, hold on, hold on. Why did the chicken cross the road? Why did it cross the road, Brian? To get to your house. What? 
Knock, knock. Who's there? The chicken. Oh. I think that was better than your show. But I know I'm biased. Hey, big tree. Um, did you ever get in a fight in school? Did I? Yeah. Uh, yes. All right, uh, nope, don't want to hear the story, but you did. All right, just confessing sins. Um, here we go. Tell me one thing you like about First Brethren Church. You've been there almost a year. What's been one of the highlights of your first year mm. at First Brethren? Well, there's so many things. Uh, definitely one of my highlights is watching my teens grow. Uh, not just you know, grow in the Lord and grow in spiritual matters, but actually grow up and they're finally seeing who they are, who they want to be, and it's just really, really cool to watch people do that. Isn't that cool? I'm with you on that one. Um, all right. Favorite place you've ever visited in your lifetime? Favorite place? Hmm. Well... Ooh. Probably my favorite place I've ever been was when I went to uh, Florida. But not because it was the destination for it. There was a little time where we, um, our car broke down halfway through Georgia. And it was right around midnight. We were super far away from Florida at this point, And we had to stop at McDonald's right around then. It was 24 at McDonald's. We had a set of cards. And I got to play uh, golf with all of my friend's family. And we sat there for hours waiting for somebody to come pick us up. And that was probably, it was on the destination to one of my favorite prettiest places in the world. The water is always warm, it's very clear, and it's just very beautiful. But just having that time of just fun and laughter and just a random McDonald's in a place I'd never been before was just a, a very wonderful experience. Very cool. One place you'd like to go to. Ooh, one place I'd like to go. Yep. Um, I always wanted to go to Ireland. Uh, I would really like to do the Pilgrim's Trail across Europe. Um, there's just a lot of places that I have not been that I would really like to see where my family's heritage is from. I'm Irish, and I just love to see what my family's homeland is all about. Awesome. Um, favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie of all time? Mm. Oh, that's a tough one. Probably my favorite movie of all time is... Uh, Probably Avatar, the newest one. Okay. Uh, not the last Airbender, the blue people one. Just because it has a very interesting story. The graphics were wonderful at that time, something that we had never seen. It was one of the very first movies that I saw in relative good 3D. And it just had a very interesting plot and just kind of brought you into a world where you didn't ever want to leave out of it. All right. So, oh, that's cool. Can I... I don't know what that is, but that also is cool. It deserves a picture. So, here you go. Take that again. Uh -huh. Question is... What's the question? If you could spend a, a hike like this or a day with one person from history, who would it be Ooh. and why? One person from history. Mm. Let me think for a second. That's a great question. Mm. Okay, Probably I would spend my time with C.S. Lewis. I have a lot of questions about the, about not just his Narnia books, but all of his works in general. If not that, I would spend it with Frank Peretti. Um, I really love his Present Darkness series. And just milling over what came to mind when he was trying to write those books. And all the things that, you know, all the struggles that he came in as a Christian and how, um, how those really affected his lifestyle and all his writings in the past. Wow. That's pretty deep. Uh see here. Oh, I just had a question. Oh, how about if it was one person from the Bible that you could spend a day with? Who would it be? And you can't say Jesus, because that's a Sunday school answer. So, assuming you would like to have a day with Jesus, after Jesus, on day two, who would you want to spend the day with? Mm. You know, normally, I would say maybe David. He was one of the greatest kings. Okay. Some days I would probably say Paul, because he was one of the greatest messengers. But honestly, I have always wanted to know what was going through Noah's mind. 
Because in the Bible we see that Noah is contacted by God to build an ark. And then we know that the ark was probably built over about a hundred years. And during that time, we don't see if God spoke to him again. And so that man probably took a message from a once in a once in a hundred years and built his entire lifetime, our current lifetime, around that one thing. Just to be hmm. on a boat. And I would love to know how he took all of that dedication and what it was like to live in a world where everyone, everyone except for him, was extremely ungodly and what that persecution must have been like. Wow, good call. So let's take the Noah theme. If you could be one animal, what would you want to be and why? Red panda. Red so panda. If you ever watched one of those videos where the red panda gets scared by the rock or while the zookeeper steps by the cage and animal starts freaking out, it's just whenever it gets scared, it looks like it just wants to hug something. And it's probably one of the cutest animals there's ever been. Awesome. Um, what scares you? What's tell scary? me one fear. One just fear. one. You probably have more than one. I do. But um, tell me one. One fear. Well, one fear is probably cooking chicken. Cooking I, chicken? Cooking chicken. You see, the slimy texture of the kitchen. Uh, kitchen. No, no, chicken. The slimy texture of the uh, chicken, I just can't get past. It's something that you know, kind of makes me sick whenever I try it. Unfortunately, it's going to be a huge part of my diet this next couple months, so I could use the prayer. So I'm thinking if any of the youth of First Brethren are looking for a trick to pull on Derek, I think a bag of raw chicken and squash would be awesome. Or I might cry. Might cry. So just throwing that out there to anybody who might see this. Um, awesome. Favorite subject in school? Mm. Well, I was never too terribly good at math. Wasn't too terribly good at science, but I did love English. Um, I've writ written a book right now um, about uh, some magi, um, and it was one of my favorite things that I've ever done for a professor, and we worked on it, along it, and I got a little bit of credit at the end, and it was just a great experience. So really, English and writing was probably my two favorite things. All right, cool. Hey, so I want to point out, um, it has nothing to do with what you just said, so you see those blue blazes, and then here's a blue blaze, there's a white blaze, and so we are at the split. So we're back, uh, this is, so you see where the shelter, that's where we were, we went that way to the shelter yesterday, and then we looped around on the Lovington Spring Loop Trail, and we ended up back here in the Lovington Loop as mentioned here. So we just did 2.7, and so we're going to Salt Log Gap, so we got 1.8 left. And um, so, yeah. Um, so we'll leave it with this, Derek. I have one more question for you. Funniest word you've ever heard. Funniest word? One that always makes me crack up is the word bamboozled. 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 Awesome. <laughs> so there you go. So we're going to leave you with bamboozled. Uh, so here you go. Here's the trail. We're heading down. And wildlife. And here we go.